Well, this week we got a little more information around the PlayStation VR 2. Not necessarily information that we were hoping to see, like the price, the release date, some new games that we'll be able to play with the headset and controllers and all of this. Uh, they more or less showed off things like the user interface and some extra features. But pricing, I, I still think, is something that Sony is wrestling with right now. And in fact, looking, uh, looking across the board here, it actually seems that prices are going up. In fact, we had a bit of a price hike on a very popular headset now, and I think that's going to spell out an interesting reveal for Sony. Guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure you hit that like button. helps out a ton. And if you're new here to the Spawn Wave Plus channel, make sure you subscribe down below. Let's head over here real quick. This is over on Oculus.com where they have a blog post saying MetaQuest 2 pricing changes. Beat Saber included for a limited time. It seems like a great deal, right? You just you buy the headset, you get Beat Saber. Except one thing happened that really surprised a lot of people. I even mentioned it on Twitter and people thought that I mixed it up. That like uh, instead I accidentally said the price had gone up when it actually went down. No, no, the price on the the quest headset quest 2 went up $100 uh, you can see here they say starting in august meta quest 2 will cost 400 usd and 500 usd that's for the 120 gigabytes or the 256 gigabyte model it's even more expensive in japan where like the 256 gigabyte model i believe is uh, north of 560 or 570 dollars for the quest 2 now the quest 2 Compared to what Sony is going to be doing with the PlayStation VR 2, just from the different things they've shown, while it won't have the same like all-in-one headset feature that we have with the Quest 2, it does seem like the, the PSVR 2 is going to have features that are more advanced, obviously, than what we have with the Quest 2 when it comes to the overall fidelity and uh, setup there to go along with the PlayStation 5. So, overall, you will still need the PS5, but... I think the headset itself is actually going to be more expensive than the Quest 2. And to me, that made more sense when the Quest 2 was $300 and $400. I don't know if anyone expects PlayStation VR 2 to be $300. I, I assume not. I'm thinking, and this, especially now after seeing this, I kind of think that PlayStation VR 2 headset is going to come in at like $600. I... I think there's going to be some heavy sticker shock when they first show it. Now, we had a look at some of some of the extra features here with our headset and then the two controllers there. But they showed off like the user interface, which is great. It's basically, you know, thing that'll pop up here. You can turn the uh, headset vibration on and off, screen brightness, the the screen size and everything. I think the headset vibration with the advanced haptic feedback that can work alongside of the controllers and everything, I think they can do some really cool stuff with that. The example I keep pointing to is like if it's raining, they can try to simulate like raindrops on your head, just something basic like that. Uh, they did, did talk about the see-through view, so you can see your uh, your surroundings, probably with like the press of a button or, or something in a menu. If you got to pick up con another controller as they're holding one here, they want to grab the other one, or just make sure you're not too close to that TV. <laughs> Uh, but they also have, like, a, a way you can customize your play area here so you can map it out. And it will alert you if you're getting a little too close to it. And they have, like, this cinematic mode here for broadcasting yourself when you're streaming on Twitch or anything like that. They're very purposely, like, dropping breadcrumbs throughout the year. Just keeping everyone, just keep everyone thinking about this new headset from Sony with the PSVR 2. They're, they're eventually going to have a big information blowout. They have said they have quite a few games that are in development and potentially could be ready for launch. And there will be some third-party stuff in there like Resident Evil, right, that, that I'm sure will be around. But they're talking like 20-some-odd games that will probably be ready to go at launch, which is the biggest thing they need to do. Because right now, Meta, they're trying to be the general headset. Like, they, they want to get to a position where someone's grandparents are going to be using a, a Meta Quest five or something to go to the the i don't know this virtual world that you uh that you could normally do in a browser but for some reason you want to walk around in the in the virtual space to order groceries or something there whereas obviously sony is like hey this is a gaming headset 
doesn't necessarily mean they won't do like a PlayStation Home 2 or their own VR chat kind of thing. And I'm sure they will attempt something that's more social oriented in, in that regard. I think it'd be kind of cool to have that alongside of it. But primarily they're looking at this as a premium gaming device to go alongside of well, the premium gaming device that you have, your PlayStation 5. And maybe because of that, it the, the sticker shock won't necessarily hit the enthusiast as much as it will, like just the general audience who maybe wasn't as in the VR, thought about it, hey, that might be kind of cool to get, and they're like, whoa, that's 600, I'll wait. But the enthusiast, uh, trust me, VR is, is an expensive endeavor if you want that high quality experience, and at least it looks like Sony is thinking a bit about how they're going to pursue this more so than they did with the PS4, where they they seem to want to get into VR, but they had to do a lot to make it work with that PlayStation 4. So at least here, it's like one cable, you know, the booster box, and originally it cut out HDR, and there's a lot of things you had to give up, essentially, uh, which included floor space and cables running everywhere uh, to make it work. I am just very interested now in this pricing after Meta had to raise the prices on their headset. And it makes sense when you look at their most recent financial report that came out today. They lost $2.8 billion with this big push towards the Metaverse stuff. So uh, I, I get curious about how Sony is going to approach the pricing on this headset. And in fact, why don't you leave me your Best guess as to how much you think this headset's going to cost because I've seen some pretty wild predictions out there ranging from anywhere from a couple hundred dollars all the way up to like a thousand dollars for this headset. I don't think it's going to cost that much, but I think it's going to be more than people were, were originally expecting. Let me know what you guys think though down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.